I did read somewhere online there was a specific statistic in a survey where um, it said 79% of people thought that um, I might be gay, yeah. And that's um, revealed to me at the top of the documentary where I, um, I, I'm almost slightly offended by that because it's something that's, it's, you know, I'm not gay. But as I sort of, um, as, I go, as I go through this journey, I learned that actually, you know, there might be parts of me that are more gay than I think. Um, my new documentary coming out where I sort of um, investigate the sexuality of kind of people and more specifically sort of the younger generation because I think there's a definite, there's a definite sort of divide somewhere in between my generation and the kind of, you know, my parents' generation. There's a definite divide where something's changed and we view sexuality a lot differently and we're all happy to be a lot more open um, with ourselves and be more true to ourselves. And, and not be scared what people would have thought in with regards to traditional beliefs they did like 50 years ago. So something has definitely changed. Now I can't necessarily pinpoint what it is, but it's definitely a really good thing for the world. It, it opened my eyes to how, how, how big of a spectrum this whole sexuality thing is. There's so many different possibilities of people to be certain ways. And only in the last 50 years or so, we've come to these um, labels like lesbian, bi and, and straight. And actually, those aren't right because it's much bigger than that. I think sexuality is very fluid. It's something that can be ever-changing, and I think attraction is something that's ever-changing as well. Um, just because, you know, you know, at this point, I still would identify as straight, but that doesn't mean, after doing the documentary, I haven't looked at some guys in different ways. And I don't know if that makes me bisexual. Maybe it does. I mean, I'm sure it probably does. When did you come out as transgender? I came out maybe four months ago. I actually came out on Facebook. Um, to everyone because everyone just knew me as the crossdresser and the one way to get out and to change my name from my birth name to Brooke I had to, well I felt like I had to say it on Facebook. I went and met Brooke only about three or four months after um, she transitioned into a woman um, she hadn't had an operation or anything but um, I'd never spent any time with a transgender before and um, after spending like even just a couple of minutes with Brooke it was it was it was quite bewildering because she just like seeped femininity and it was it, it really it really showed me how she's not making this up. She is a woman. She really is. I've, I've, never, I've, never, actually, I've never cross-dressed before, and um, I thought it was going. I thought I was going to feel like a man in women's clothes. But when I put the women's clothes on, I felt incredibly feminine. I, I, I felt the woman um, coming out of me. <laughs> um, it was a lot of preparation, painful on the testicles and stuff. Um, because of the fact that they had to be like gaffered round into your bum bit, um, but um, yeah, it was a, it was a really different experience, and um, it took me out of myself for a while. It was really interesting to actually kind of feel what it might have been like to be a woman. There's still a little bit of a taboo around these labels of sexuality, and I think they just need to go. Um, when I was doing the documentary, there was this um, a figure I learned on Facebook, there's something like 102 different boxes for your sexuality or something. Why? Why can't you just be I, me? And that is, I think, what I've ultimately learned. People don't need labels. You can fancy whoever you want, you can do what you want, and you can still be straight, and you can still be gay, you can just do whatever. Yeah.